as we continue to listen to Kunen Radio 94.3, it's exactly to the hour of two minutes past 1700 hour. We also are coming to the attention uh, from the great sounds of uh, Black Diamond Isoka. That was one of his official music uh, video out there that really shined a lot in the play, uh, that really shined a lot in the in the in the on his music career as well. As we continue to uh, to go forward with uh, the news of the update, uh, we are going to have Christy Claude, who is going to talk to us more about um, the initiatives uh, for immunity. And as we said, you continue to stay tuned as we call him all the way from Vinduk and he's going to be live. Yes, Christy Claude. Yes, are you well? Yes, it's a Buta Kitty all the way from Kunena Radio. Are we are we together in this uh, lovely edition of uh, the Institutes of for Humanity? Yes, I suppose so. Okay, thank you. Uh, to our listeners out there, it is uh, Christy Calder all the way from the Namibian or live from Vinduk. Yes, Calder, uh, tell us. Well, um, according to your article uh, in the Namibian, which you uh, recently. Uh, um, just post it, uh, and then we are looking at uh, will you uh, will mandating vaccine specifically for people that work with those uh, considered to be vulnerable not be unfair treatment? Or what are you going to tell us? Well, I think maybe I should give you a bit of a context as to why I wrote this column. Yes. Um, up until now, uh, we've thought, uh, and by we I mean governments, health experts, companies all thought that the uh, use of vaccines to get back to normal mm. uh, and by providing people with information and education about COVID and the vaccines and the impact of the vaccines and the impact of, of vaccinations, that those things would all uh, help people or drive people towards accepting vaccines, getting vaccinated, because uh, I suppose we all want to make sure that uh, there's something to look forward to, the job, uh, normal education for our children and so forth. But that hasn't happened. Um, people have not responded to the information and education approach, and they don't seem to be motivated by uh, let's return to normal uh, kind of argument. So now we have to debate what can we do in order for us uh, to up the vaccine levels because without high enough vaccine levels we would never achieve that sort of um, desired level of herd immunity. So when we talk about whether people should give up some of their freedoms in order for us to achieve that goal, um, it may come in various shapes and forms. Now, I don't think there is a political will anywhere at the moment to mandate vaccines. Uh, so we have to look at ways to up the vaccine rates without necessarily forcing people to take vaccines. Mm. We want to provide incentives, and this column is about the kinds of incentives that has been used elsewhere that we could try and use locally uh, to help us achieve that uh, elevated vaccine levels. Mm -hmm. Wow, uh, that is a really uh, very interesting out there from uh, Christy Calder. And then Christy, tell us more about the, will the restriction of access to certain activities not be an infringement uh, on uh, citizens, uh, right? So I actually, uh, I want us to, I want you to elaborate more for our community out there in terms of the movement or association, for example. Yes, I think your, your, your previous question, maybe I could add a little bit to that. Yeah. Um, in this, and, and then going to your second question, the, the issue is we always seem to highlight people's rights uh, and people's individual rights, yeah. the right not to be vaccinated. But we don't seem to focus on the obligations that are uh, the opposite end of rights. All rights have obligations. 
we also seem to think that our rights are absolute, uh, which they're not. Mm. We already have enough mandatory restrictions on our rights mm. that we don't really care about. We have the right to free speech, but our free speech are limited. Mm. We are not allowed to say things that would offend others, uh, threaten the stability of the country and so forth. Mm -hmm. But we say that's all right. We don't want to insult people. We don't want to uh, provoke and, uh, and put the country into conflict. Uh, by hate speech. So we accept that there's a limitation on our right, mm. uh, our freedoms to speech, because mm. it's the responsible thing to do. Um, and the same thing applies here. If we want to work, say, for example, in a hospital or an old age facility or wherever, the patients or the inhabitants of that place is vulnerable and hence uh, susceptible to very great illness or even death if they get infected. Why would we want to have unvaccinated people carrying on to performing those tasks? If somebody uh, infects people within an old age home and people die as a result of those infections, what are we going to do about it? Is it not our obligation as a society and as a government to protect the vulnerable? Mm -hmm. So the argument is not that they're trying to force you to get vaccinated. They're simply saying, if you want to work in certain jobs, you have to be vaccinated. Otherwise, you have to work in a different job. Mm -hmm. So, um, right? Christy, um, you see, this is now where we come into... Uh, very much um, uh, debatable if we have to go deep according to your article and then we also have uh, the democracy also that plays uh, a role there a part of the human right but also we have uh, a democracy that plays right there but uh, as you're telling uh, the community out there it seems like uh, uh, there is a respect of those rights while people they thought that uh, there is no respect isn't it yes i think you know it's the same argument that applies. Mm. Let's assume for a minute before there was COVID. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you wanted to go to a restaurant or a bar to enjoy yourself. If you go in, there's a sign up that says um, that there's conditionalities to your entry, right? Mm -hmm. That uh, the right of it, that there's a, a, a right of admission which means that the establishment can ask you to leave if you do not behave appropriately. A restaurant owner or a bar owner has every right to say, please leave my bar if you fight inside it, if you're too drunk to come in, um, and we're okay with that. So why would we have a problem if the right of admission states that you have to be vaccinated? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, what is... We're not saying you should be vaccinated. It's not you should vaccinate. We're saying if you want to come to this bar or this restaurant, you have to be vaccinated. Yeah. Wow, that's, uh, that's good. That's, that's really very interesting because um, that is... At the same time, it also makes sense. Yes, uh, Christy, we are going to have one uh, last question that uh, you would like to answer to uh, our Konene community. Um, before we, we go to the last question, there is this issue of um, recently the community, more especially the population, as a small uh, business inter uh, enterprises where they complain about their restrictions of economic wise and uh, we also uh, see uh, see the president also try to ask some of the questions in which uh, the community at the end they did not really get satisfied now tell us would you recommend that namibia provide financial incentives or does it fall under cash uh, strapped government uh, I, I, I think the financial incentives are uh, are of interest to people because everybody would like to have a few extra dollars in their hands. Mm. But I don't think it's the right way to go. And there's a number of reasons for that. Um, one is that I think it encourages 
uh, behavior which we later on may regret. For example, if I or the government decides to pay all Namibians who vaccinate, say, $100, for example, then what's going to happen next year when we have, perhaps have to go for a third round of vaccines or a fourth round of vaccines? How sustainable is that kind of incentive? Mm. The other hand, you know, we ask people to vaccinate their children from their babies and go back for at least three or four different follow-up vaccinations to those initial uh, what if people then start to say, well, if you've paid me for COVID, surely you can pay me for measles. Mm. We will not enter, or we will regret this kind of behavior where everybody's incentivized to go and do something which they should do because it's their moral duty as citizens of this country to protect themselves and to protect others. So I'm not a big fan of the financial incentives. I think there are better ways. Let's use your example of small businesses that are struggling to, to, yeah. to make a living. Yeah. Right now, the Shabin owners and bar owners are talking to the government and say that government should allow them to have people drink on site. I think this provides an opportunity where we could use this kind of strategy of social incentives, providing social incentives, to allow them to pursue their business uh, ideals as well as promote our vaccine drive. So maybe we could strike a deal. Mm. If you are a, a Shabin owner, all the workers of the Shabin uh, are vaccinated. And you allow only vaccinated people to drink at your, your Shabin. You can open your Shabin, right? Yeah. Would that not be an incentive to get my business going? Because right now, government sees these places as potential sites for or, or super spreader uh, mm. sites mm. where high levels of, of, of infections come from people abusing alcohol. Mm. What if we only allow vaccinated people to visit these places? Maybe that will in, inspire more people yeah, to be, be able to do it. Mm. Mm. Right? Mm. And the same thing applies to restaurants and gyms and movie theaters and sports events, soccer games, festivals, all these things. If you want to participate in these social events, everywhere where there's person-to-person -person contact, you have to be vaccinated. It's being done now in a lot of countries worldwide, and it works. Mm -hmm. It really works. So I can't see why we don't do it here. And of course, another option would be to raise premiums for things like health and life insurance so that those who pose an unfair risk compared to the vaccinated people should pay more for the same service. We're doing it already. We're charging people who smoke higher premiums on life and health insurance. We're, we're uh, people with, with uh, uh, certain diseases have to pay more in order to be insured. Why can't we do it for vaccinations? Because unvaccinated people pose a higher risk and stand to benefit disproportionately from the contributions of vaccinated people. And that's unfair. I think it needs to change. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Christy Claude. Um, I believe uh, that uh, okay. our people, they've uh, listened carefully and then we're going to make the right uh, uh, decision. Can I, can I just add one more thing? Yes. And that is that it doesn't help us developing incentives for vaccinations mm -hmm. if we don't have access to vaccinations. Mm -hmm. So government must make sure we have enough vaccines before we start creating these incentives. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Mm. We're done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christy. Uh, have a nice, uh, lovely evening out there already. <laughs> uh, thank you. You too, man. Yes. Well. Yes. Thank you. Stay safe. Oh, that was uh, Christy all the way from uh, Dynamibian uh, News. It's uh, blinging on the uh, on the alpha factor. Um, Fact uh, Alpha Researcher, 
in which uh, they research for the right thing of the people in Namibia. As uh, for us, uh, you continue to listen to Kunal Radio. That is me, Buta KT. Stay tuned for more updates and entertainment in uh, our radio. That is to say, your community radio.